Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for Ahmed. She is the limited for episode 4, or is it episode 5 now? I'm not quite sure. So generally speaking, in the past episodes, we've like received the limited character in that episode. Like around like chapter 3-4-ish? I, 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 re I remember Landy was for sure. Um, Landy was episode 3, Cerise was episode 2. I believe and uh, they they came like relatively in the middle but episode 4 I was waiting for this you know what I even forgot that there was a limited hero associated with episode 4 um, but then in the YouTube video epic 7's official video talking about Ahmed they were saying that oh we'll learn more about her in episode 5 as well so like is she kind of like you know not really the limited for episode 4 I know that small gate is very very slow this year um, I don't really know what's the hold up. Usually we have like more to chew on, more of like a roadmap for the upcoming year. We haven't really seen that. They're they're still not fully done closing off what they promised last year. So, you know, Expo level five, three v three arena. But you know what? Let, let me not pivot over to those kind of conversations. But let's just say that Ahmed is a welcome addition, and I think that her new design, which I'll talk about in a bit, is a lot nicer. Um, and uh, I learned like a week later that she's a limited hero. <laughs> I didn't even know at the first. So here are my initial thoughts. So you can trust it, right? Um, so here, this is like uh, like a combined. Like I had to stitch together. This was like a moving image across the video. I had to stitch it together. But you can see like the face on the left side there. There is Ahmed's old design, and I believe that's what you see of her in like the so story and side stories um before so like if i compare it i definitely think like the new design the new render looks a lot better now i think like unless i'm mistaken i think this is the only time we've ever seen a character like actually transform the look uh like mid story i think the only other one that i recall was strays for those of you who know what i'm talking about i think strays used to have a completely different look within the game itself. I don't know if that ever got replaced or anything, I'm not quite sure. And I don't even know if the limited Ahmed, uh, if she comes into the game, like would the old NPC Ahmed in the story change as well? I'm not quite sure, like, um, but if she doesn't change, then this is definitely like one of the rarer occasions where Smogit releases a hero before, like you have a preview, but then while she's a playable hero, the design is revamped. Um, uh, for lore fanatics, maybe has something to do with like a, her past or whatever. Um, whatever the reason is, I am very glad for the new design because I I dig the new design. I felt like the old design was kind of bland. Even though on the right side, in that square, you see a close up of the boobs, which I guess it wasn't. <laughs> I just realized I'm like, okay, wait, maybe it's not for the boobs. Because my question was like, why why a zoom in on the boobs when we don't have like a comparison? No, it was for the flower thing on her on her wrist. Uh, apologies, apologies. I uh, I didn't know, but now now I know. But uh, just you know, coincidentally, it is on the nice pillow there. Um, anyway, so yeah, enough of the art. I think her new design is really great. Um, this is like. Part of the illustrations they showed, um, and I think this is used for the backdrop of part of her S3. Uh, and I found like this image is really, really nice. Now, I don't know like what monitor you're looking at, or maybe you're not even looking at your screen, but like it's just the way that it illuminates. It looks really nice. I like the contrast. I really like the design there. All right, so let's talk about Ahmed, the character. All right, so she is a Soul Weaver and a Taurus, and this is not a new star sign, but her imprint concentration definitely gives her, I think, a way stronger kit than someone like Rey. Um, and why I talk about Rey, Green Rey, so Earth Elemental Rey, is also a Soul Weaver Taurus. So he was the hero I was using as like a base. In terms of mocking up, like with my current gear, what kind of army could I build? Um, and if I give her my fastest speed gear, I think I can get to 299 speed and 180 ER. And 180 ER, that's not with the effect resistance that you can get potentially from the imprint concentration. That is definitely something that I will say that is very strong in her kit, is that her imprint concentration is going to be vital if you plan to use her for super aggressive play. 
all right i'm gonna talk about that in a bit but if you take a look at the base stats the health is very low um 4800 is very low for a soul weaver um and then the stat line that i got her i mean it wasn't like perfect sets like it was a broken set and whatnot but the health i got was like around like 13,000. the defense was somewhere as low as like i don't know like 1200 um it's very very squishy but again when we talk about her kit i don't think her bulkiness really really matters especially if you have access to speed gear uh one talk is also the imprint release is important um the 10 percent attack is very nice that is kind of like uh dn's uh imprint release but the imprint concentration is also more useful kind of like amelia's imprint concentration and why i bring up those two soul weavers of course we know that uh like smogit really loves making ice specific soul weavers into limited characters and uh she definitely has like the best split of imprint concentration and imprint release both from amelia and dn and then as i mentioned because this is ray's star sign we have effect resistance now green ray himself he has hp percent imprint which is really really low value for him because of his base health as you can see on the screen there so for her if you can get her at triple s you have 57 percent effect resistance right off the bat with 117 base speed which is insanely fast right it's really really good that is the fastest soul weaver we have currently in the game um Singelica is a four star version of that and when she was released i think she was the first taurus soul weaver uh sinful angelica it was already really fast i think some, something like 115 or 114 speed or something already really good anyways talk about the s2 so s2 grants skill nullifier once to all allies and it increases the combat readiness by 15 percent if you max skill enhance it's another 10 percent so 25 percent cr boost that's no joke, especially with her fast base speed. It also grants her an extra turn, and this is a non-attack skill. With the uh, Mola up to plus four, you get a minus one turn cooldown, which means that this is a four turn skill, which really means that this S2 is, functions as an S3. If you think about it, if you think about it, this S2 does function like an S3, because you think about like uh, Bunny Dom's S3, um, uh, skill nullifier here and boosting the entire team and entire team skill null kind of like athletica it is really an s3 packed into an s2 but it also grants you an extra turn which smile apparently <laughs> doesn't like like i mean they don't care about releasing really fast base heroes about fast base speed heroes with insanely crazy kits like when ta talking about the combination of skills and then also granting an extra turn like have they not learned their lesson i don't know i think it's just like if they want to sell a hero like that hero has to do that it has to have an extra turn um we already know what we're talking about back when payro is really crazy ran is still pretty annoying see lilius of course so um yeah <laughs> Talking about the S3, it's a touch of hope, also a non-attack skill, so something to keep in mind. It only has a plus one skill enhance, minus one turn cooldown, which means that this is a four turn, uh, four turn cooldown skill. Um, but you will most likely always use both in a combo anyway. Since you are going to do a non-attack skill on the S3, you may as well have done the S2 because S2 would protect you from something like Selene. So green Selene proccing, um, it would even somewhat protect you from a politis who is a fully damage dealer if the politis is some like abyssal crown degen politis then it's still not over yet so i that's why i'm i'm bringing this up it's still not the end um ahmed is very very packed like i said if you have the ability to triple last you have 57 er give her an er ring you have about like you know almost 200 er then there is a high chance that a politist can't even debuff her unless it's like a full on debuffing politist which could be pol like popular with Ahmed being released right so i'm just i'm just saying that right now like a 200 effectiveness politist on abyssal crown or something like that might have to be the play to counteract Ahmed um because Ahmed can technically boost twice so it can supersede politist's own cr boost Right, just keeping that in mind um but uh, i'll talk about the boosting twice part in a bit the s2 boosts s3 dispels two debuffs from an ally except the caster and grants swift attack increases attack of the target for two turns so this is a pickable skill all right so you get to pick but it's a single target skill 
So if your full team is, let's say, debuff from Politis, then you can technically only, you know, open up your attacker. Now, there is a lot of damage dealers right now that I think that even opening up one DPS could be like a game changer. Let's say, for example, Ahmed into like a Euphine and you had access to souls, then you can soul burn and then kill off one target. If it's as a hawk, then you can, you know, boost the hawk, cleanse him. Let's say he is like crown stunned or something. You can boost him, give him an attack buff. He can cleanse someone else, also giving an additional boost for that character. So you get two of your damage dealers freed. Now, if there is no Politus, if there is no Selene, this is already insane because you still do an attack buff into, um, uh, what do you call it? Attack buff, you already had skill null and you're boosting the team and that's not counting your artifact. And so increase the target uh, attack for two turns. The swift attack skill is a brand new skill introduced through Ahmed and maybe we'll see it in the future. But at the end of the turn, increases combat readiness by 50% it is dispelled once the effect is activated so we'll take a look at this so this can be stripped all right so that that boot icon so i took the liberty of like painting out everything else except that the uh stacks the buff stacks on kisei now this is uh quite important to know um it's not i mean it's not hard to figure out increase the combat range at the end of the turn right so Kisei has swift attack. In this video, what happens is that Kisei does the S3 uh, and goes into stealth, has the barrier, and has attack buff, of course. And you can see that the Ahmed actually procced the crit damage buff, which is from her artifact. We'll talk about that in a bit. But Kisei has swift attack. So after Kisei goes, uh, Kisei will get the turn right away because Kisei uh, boosts herself 50% CR boost. So in this demonstration, it's like, oh, swift attack gives you another 50%. So it doesn't just work for Kisei, right? Like, let's say, for example, you're bringing Ahmed into like a really, really fast Landy. Because Landy grants like, what is it? Like 20, 20% CR boost or something. But she has speed buff. But let's say your opponent's team is insanely slow. Like 220 speed max. And you got some knights and like, like the stuff you see there, minus Angel of Light. Right, you got like a Karina, you got a Bellion, you got an ROL. Usually they're about like 200 speed max, but sub 200. So if you brought someone like Landy, and Landy was like, oh, CR boost S3, boom. You get like a 70%-ish CR boost, and then Landy already has speed buff, so she might get another turn. Um, now, whether another turn actually matters because you, the opponent might not have debuffs, but I'm just saying that there are just going to be more and more heroes that we'll think of um, that isn't just Kisei. Kisei is obvious because it's 50 to 50%. So that's why Smoggy wanted to showcase this. And because the crit damage buff and the attack buff, in the next scene in their video, Kisei does the S2 and like pretty much wipes the entire team. I don't know if Kisei can do that though. Like realistically, let's say in a, in a real RTA match. I don't know if he could do that through a Bellion and a ROL's a Escort. I don't think so, but... In their showcase, it did it, but we kind of get the point, right? Like, if your opponent got a spec tenny there, like, they got to ban the Kisei, right? But then that means maybe the Ahmed goes through or something, you know? There's, there's going to be a lot of interplay. Another thing with Ahmed would be that as soon as Smilegate starts releasing more characters that have some kind of insane self-CR boost after, like, an ultimate, like an S3 or an S2, then the swift attack becomes much more inter like there's more interplay right because like right now you might think like oh yeah 50 percent of cr boost always good right cr manipulation always op but sometimes you're just like well what's the point i can't get another turn um but that is with the characters right now i think i think what would scare me is that with their design with ahmed like this it just it's kind of like Caesarea, right? Back when Summertime Caesarea was released, I'm like, okay, it it takes too many things to make her good because like you would need someone that does AOE and strip at the same time, right? And then right after Caesarea, we got Ran, we got Para, and then we had like all these other ones, like Edda got a buff in between, like after Caesarea as well. And, and, and then the Caesarea meta was just like really, really annoying. 
Um, and this is what I can predict as well. It's like someone like Ahmed, you'll be like, hmm, swift attack sounds really cool in paper, but who can use? Um, then the next thing you know is that Smogate releases a lot of cleave and aggro heroes. That will benefit from the swift attack, and you would wish that you had maybe a triple S Ahmed. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Something we have to always note is that even if a character seemingly looks weird, as soon as a limited or even like an ML5 brings in some kind of new mechanic, it's always, you always have to think about it, right? It's like, okay, maybe some heroes can't benefit from it now, but when it's a new mechanic, that's when it gets scary. Um, because then they can add anything else to um, like have better chemistry with that new mechanic and then you're kind of screwed. Anyways, so this is part of Ahmed's S3. I say Ahmed's S3 outside of these like close-up shots are really really nice. I and it's like it's elegant. It has like a it has like a DN feeling to it. The thing with the, her S3 is that like I feel I I felt like they could have done more on the hand-drawn animation part. Right, there's a there's a like half of the animation is her standing before the the tree, uh, this tree. Um, but that was in her like sprite based animation. Um, but I felt like this was such a nice scene that they could have like extended a bit longer and maybe less of the tree. Um, but I thought that was a missed opportunity, especially if she's like a limited and she is well designed. That's why I wanted to see more. Like maybe maybe a a shot where you get to see like her chest in the shot. All right, people who think I'm DJ, I'm not. I'm just saying that she has nice clothes. Okay. So, like, ideally you include more clothes, right? No, so, I don't know. I don't know if anyone feels the same. It's a nice S3 animation. It's just, like, it doesn't feel as valuable as it could be. Okay, the S1, even to me, is also really, really good. So this is, this is why I was saying that I don't think she needs to be insanely bulky. As long as she has really high ER and really fast, she will do what you want her to do, which is ideally you have her with, like, you know, maybe another pusher or someone that is able to uh, aggress the rest of your team. But realistically, you're like in RTA, you're drafting like two pushers and like three damage dealers. And ideally, one or two of those damage dealers have like extra turn mechanics or some kind of double kill mechanic or some kind of utility, like what I was talking about, the hawk and stuff like that. Um, and actually, I just thought about this. Like, maybe like Ed is not played a lot anymore because of the Stina ROL and stuff like that, but I think that, uh, I mean, with her double push, right? Think about that that potential with that, uh, um, pretty crazy. Uh, so the S1, uh, attacks the enemy with a fan, increases the combat radius of the cast by 10%, and it's up to 15% if you plus 5. Now because she's not a damage dealer, I know that they put a lot of the MOLA into the S1, because generally S1s usually stop at 5, but they made the S3 just one like the minus one turn cooldown, so they had to bloat or inflate the S1, kind of normal, but you just plus 5 for sure and you get a 15%. If 10 soul is consumed, increases the combat readiness for everyone, which is, you're, you're basically, she's like a CR boosting machine, right? Um, S2 CR boost, S3 CR boost, with the artifact, with her artifact, which we'll talk about in a sec, and then S1 CR boost entire team if you consume souls. If you're playing aggressive with her, you're most likely having one or maybe even two or maybe even three book holders, so that is, it's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be very, very nasty. Um, so her limited artifact, Fan of Light and Dark. So let's look at the max version. Um, after using a non-attack skill twice, which she does, and you ideally would always want to do both. Increase the combat range of the ally with the highest attack by 20% and has a 70% chance to increase the critical hit damage for two turns. Now, critical hit damage buff is uh, never as good as attack buff. Like it's just, it's proven um, I like outside of maybe an HP scaling bruiser, defense scaling bruiser, maybe, sure. Uh, but the attack buff has always been stronger. So the very fact that the proc rate in terms of like the chance of it not proccing or whatever is on the crit damage itself in my opinion like that's it's fine like if you could get the 70 awesome like any additional damage will ensure your kill uh better but uh the 20 cr boost is definitely the the main highlight here 
Um, and then do notice that the 20% CR boost with the 70% chance is based on the level of the artifact. So realistically, I would try to get this artifact max limit broken. Now, the thing with this artifact is that, again, Ahmed, she is a healer that does not heal, right? Um, we gotta think about that. She does cleanse, but it's only one target. And if you put on like, let's say something like Doctor's Bag, it won't work on her either because like I said, you would ideally do the S2 first. So the debuffs usually come after her S2. So Doctor's Bag is gonna seemingly be kind of useless. Um, so you can't like actually get more cleanse out of it. So until we do, until we get like an artifact as like a full team cleanse like controllable which ideally is when she pops her s3 i think that this artifact will be her best in slot i don't see ahmed being used anywhere that is like like i don't see the benefit of her being very bulky and and kind of slow um her whole kit revolves around her getting the first turn or your whole team getting the first turn rather um, I just feel like if she's treated as anywhere like an, a DN or an Amelia, um, which are currently ran now about like 260 to 270 speed, she kind of loses her point unless you know the opponent you're fighting is completely slow. So maybe for like an arena cleave or something like that. But like if it's like in a world arena, you would ideally want her at 300 speed. And like I said, with the high ER, and that just lowers the chances of you failing to use her, right? So for example, like someone like C. Lilius, if C. Lilius versus her and C. Lilius can't debuff her, um, which most C. Lilius are running half, like I'm seeing half, like some people are running like high effect C. Lilius, some people are running high ER C. Lilius to counteract Zeo. Um, if the C. Lilius doesn't get uh, a debuff on her or in terms of uh, their redirected provoke, then Ahmed is able to cleanse the damage dealer, potentially game-changing, um, and also boost them up so C. Lilius' pushback actually doesn't really matter. Um, regardless, because this banner is a limited banner, um, I see that her banner is, you know, I would rate it as very high, especially if you have the gear to play aggressively and you like playing aggressively. I think that uh, pulling uh, for a max limit broken artifact is well worth anything with CR boost. Um, but again, do keep this in mind that currently I think she's the only Soul Weaver that would be best in slot with this because it synergizes with her full kit, her role, the best. Uh, and then other Soul Weavers, let's say like uh, Amelia and DN, they are, they kind of currently they're serving more as like. Um, like more support like long-term fighters so you ideally want like a healing artifact on those heroes so you like even though they do non-attack skills it's not going to be super high benefit for them in my opinion uh for dn and amelia that is on this artifact so if you are taking my advice and you are going to pull for triple s or multiple copies you ideally do want this max limit broken and you ideally do want her at triple less. Um, but realistically, I would say the max limit break artifact for her is more important than her triple less. Because if you do get her triple less, uh, oh, sorry, if you don't get her triple less, you can still use her uh, as long as you have the gear. If you don't have the gear, I don't think you need to use her. So this, what, this is what makes her kind of like a hard hero to kind of like if I was gonna raid her, I think that again, gear carried hero. Uh, if people have the gear running this artifact, she's gonna be insane for your team comp. If you don't have the gear, um, you pull her because she's a limited hero, but I think that you'll find less use for her compared to someone like Amelia, even when Amelia was like meta. Um, so anyways, that's my thoughts for Ahmed. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, has been informative. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Maybe there's a better artifact that I can't think of. Um, but yeah, let me do let me know what you guys think and I'm gonna end this here. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.